So here's a uh, question from the uh, for AP Calculus exam, the ABA exam, on particle motion, solving it numerically. And it says that the position of a particle is given by, uh, this uh, particle is moving along a horizontal line, along the x-axis. So x of t is equal to 1 third t cubed minus t squared minus 3t plus 4. And what I'm interested in finding out is how far does the particle travel in the first six seconds. So for t is greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to six seconds. So I'm going to start off like this, right? At first I thought it was really easy and then I got a little bit turned around because I'm going to do this, right? And then position it, t, And then we're going to take our end positions, right? At zero seconds, where is it? And at zero seconds, where is the particle? It's at 4, right? How did I do that? I went up here and I plugged in. T is 0, 0 cubed, 0 squared. Negative 3 times 0 plus 4 is, right? So there's that position. And the other position that I knew we needed was, well, where is it at 6 seconds? And at 6 seconds, I plugged in 6 here, and I did all this math, and it came out to be 22. So you can check my math and see if that works. But what's the problem with that? Here's our... Here's and here's our little guy, our particle. I mean, I don't know where he is, but maybe he's here. Do particles look like this? There's my particle. So he's, what am I assuming if I just do this? What's the assumption if I just take this distance here? Yeah, that he, that he right, that he only went right, that he didn't go back and forth, but we know that he's weird like that, so maybe he, so how would we check to see if he changed directions? Yeah, we have to find out if the velocity ever went to zero. So we know this. We know that the velocity at any given time is equal to the first derivative of the position function, isn't it? Which is equal to, so I'm just going to take the derivative here. So the derivative of this is t squared. That's the derivative of this piece. The derivative of this piece is negative 2t, isn't it? And the derivative of negative 3t is just negative 3. And, of course, the, the derivative of... Four is zero, yeah. And then what we want to know is, does the velocity does the velocity ever equal zero? So I'm just going to ask to set this up as an equation. Does the velocity here ever equal zero? So t squared minus two t minus three. We talked about this just algebra one now, right? So we factored this out, and we got t plus one. Is that good math? Yeah. T minus three is equal to zero. Keep doing algebra we solve and we know that the velocity goes to zero when time is equal to negative one and also when time is equal to three. We can throw this one out. Why can we throw this out? Mr. Carls? Yes, it's off the interval. We can make the argument about negative or positive time. We don't have to do that because we only care from zero to six and negative one doesn't fit in there so we can take that out. So now I'm interested in when t is equal to 3. So far, so good? And when t is equal to 3, the position is what? Is negative 5, negative 5. Now we're just going to solve this kind of algebraically. Obviously, in the first three seconds, which way is this guy moving? For the first three seconds, he's going this way, right? From time is 0 to time is 3, he's going left. How do I know that? Because he only changes direction he only changes direction twice, but only once on our interval, right? And he goes from 4 to negative 5. So how far did he go? Let me just set this up this way, I guess. So distance. And the distance from 4 to negative 5 is, is 9. And then at 3 seconds, he changes direction. How do we know that? Because his... Because velocity goes to zero. So for him to change direction, velocity would have had to go to zero. We, we can look at the graph, the graph of the, of the derivative function, and we see that it's increasing on the other side of that. So we know that he does start moving to the right. And he moves from negative 5 to positive 22, which is a distance of how far? 27. So our little guy moved. Our guy moved 36 units. Is that right? So on the AP exam, that's a, if, if I had this on the AP exam and
and I had my calculator, then I, I guess I'd do this. I would do this. I go over here. I would insert this graph. Now I'm insert graph. Check this out. Why am I doing this? Well, first off, what this um, derivative function looks like, it's parabolic, isn't it? So Dylan, look, it's down here. Well, look at it. It's it's x squared, right? Minus 2x, is that right? Minus 3. Right? We can use the analyze function on the calculator here. We can analyze the graph. But look what's going to happen. We can analyze, take the integral here. We want it from 0 to... We want it from 0 to 6, right? Oops, sorry. One, two, three, four. Is that 4, 5, 6? That's not right, is it? Should have stopped at 3 and done something with this, right? Let's see if we can do that over. like Dylan to just get rid of that right but what if we had done that Dylan? what if we had done this like you said what if we had gone from here to here I'm a little bit off because you see I kind of screwed up there all right so that's negative what's true about this this is distance because the reason that this is distance is because we have Time on one axis, don't we? And we have velocity on the other one. Times times velocity is distance, isn't it? But did we really travel negative something? No, it's positive. We had to take the absolute value of it, wouldn't we? So look, and then Dylan, what you're saying is right. You'd do this again. You'd analyze graph again. You take the integral here, Dylan, here, yeah, and then you go over. This is that's six right there, Dylan. And then this is supposed to be actually negative 9. I'm off a little bit. So 9, but 9 plus 27 is 36. But you'd have to know to take the absolute value of this. So what I did was this. I just went here. I inserted the graph. And I'm going to insert a graph. And then I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to my hand. I'll try to do the same thing. I'm going to do ABS. But look what it's going to do. ABS of x squared minus 2x minus 3, isn't that right? Yeah? Because look what it does. Now all the height values are positive, so when I take when I take the integral here, now I, I'll be able to go out from this distance, won't I? Does that make sense? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So now, look what happens now if I do the same thing. I go here, I'm going to analyze this graph, analyze the graph for the integral, Right? Go all the way over to... That's good, isn't it? See what happened? Because this one, if I hadn't done the absolute value, this would have shown up down here, wouldn't it? it would have, remember how it rounded out like this? And it would have showed up as negative, as negative area. Because if, if I had stopped here, I wonder if I can undo it. Look. There's the 9. I told you I missed on that 8.7. It should have been 9. So there's that. And then if I go back out to here, there's the rest of it. That's the 27 that was on the other side, isn't it? Right? Now, if you're going to, but if you were going to show that on the exam, then what you would have to do is this. If you're going to declare that on the exam, you'd have to do this. You'd have to say, I'm taking the definite integral from 0 to 6 of the absolute value of v of t dt. Does that make sense? Because because we flipped that, and that's not the original equation, so we would have had to admit that we rearranged a little bit. All right? Not bad, I think, right? Uh-oh. Wrote wrong. 